No, I don't think that the transatlantic access has diminished. I would say that the United States in this moment has to pay a lot of attention to what is happening in the Pacific. And I think that is normal for the economic development that they need to have as far as growth is concerned. Let's not forget that we all want the United States to grow because they are the, the major engine of growth for the world. On the other side, I think that the transatlantic access has been the same, which means we need to improve. And it is very encouraging to have seen that the President of the United States just recently has proclaimed that he wants to work on the transatlantic alliance, on, on improving the relationship, on this free trade agreement as far as Europe and the United States is concerned, which would really be a great opportunity for, for both areas. We all know that when you create these free trade agreements and take the European Union as an example, growth is automatically coming. Think about the fact when Spain joined the European Union, think about when the Eastern European countries joined the European Union, all of a sudden growth comes. So I presume, I, I, I think that a good policy of agreement between the two big blocks, big economic blocks, would really help both of us to grow, to grow more. And let's not forget that in this case, we are going to create an economy, a unified economy, that has an incredible size because $16 trillion the European one, $13 trillion the, the United States, you're getting close to $30 trillion of economy, which is pretty good. The world used to be simple. There was a block around the United States and there was a block around Russia. This was politics, was military and was economic. And the things were very, very simple. Now the world has evolved. We have moved from a bipolar world to a multipolar world. And so there is the need to create a lot of agreements between the several different poles to make sure that there is the optimum utilization of trade, I mean, or the maximum utilization of trade, and so that the trade becomes a free-flowing free movement. Now, if we are going to create this uh, big block of Europe and the United States, certainly we are going to move the center of gravity of the economy towards this big block, which would be a very interesting opportunity. Well, it would make, you know, the business, the United States European business of General Electric, it is the big majority of the business. And so it becomes a very, very important. But it's not only for the trade, but there is also the point of harmonization of, of various rules and regulations. Like, for instance, you know, when you have to, to account for profit and losses in Europe, you have to account the European way, then you got to change it and to make sure that you are representing it according to the US uh, laws and, and requirements, which is requiring a lot of time and it is a bureaucracy. If you could get rid of that bureaucracy, of course, all the processes would be much faster. And this is just a very, very little example that I can mention. Well, we are already playing that role, if you think about it. If you think about the investments that we have in the in, in United States, of course, but the investment that we have in Europe, it is the second largest area from the density of investment that the company has. The GE company is already playing a heavy role of bridging between the United States and Europe. So we would like to see the policies and the economies following this bridge that we are establishing already.